I feel like this is found footage. Well, it will be when somebody clicks on it. Anyway, we thought we'd do something slightly different. We have too many comics to read, and mm -hmm. we need a reason to read them other than, you know, we just got to read them. So we're going <laughs> to share them with you. Go over the comic, Tiff. <laughs> the other side, preferably. Yeah. Yeah. Let me get the right angle. Can't tell where it is. Give me that. <laughs> I'm Moon Knight. <laughs> there are actually two comics in this, right? Two? Mm hmm And uh, we're going to be focusing on the one in the back, which is... Oh, no. How did it get stuck together? <laughs> I swear it wasn't me. It's the first one. <laughs> it's the first Moon Knight. It's, gonna, it's an orange... Orange, oranges story. <laughs> <laughs> Since the Moon Knight show is out right now, and uh, we like it quite a bit, we thought this would be a fun we, thing to do. We figured we'd capitalize on the popularity. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> no, this is out of the goodness of our hearts. And capitalize on the popularity. It's the origin story of Moon Knight. <laughs> the orange story? I already made that joke. Yeah, I was making it again. Well, it sucks. A variant edition. I guess it's fairly rare because I had to pay like 30 bucks for it. But And that that was before the show. Yeah. I think... I just to, like Moon Knight. To be honest, I feel like the price could have been because of the variant cover and also the fact that it's got... The, first issue in the back. Oh, yeah. I feel like that's probably at least half the price. <laughs> Premiere issue. Premiere. No, that first page is part of the comic. <laughs> We're going to read that right now for you, right now. This, right now. Yeah, let's stop with this intro. Okay, bye. They become one to do what they must. At dawn in the Sudan, the memory of the night's merciless cold lingers in the bones. While the day's withering heat has already begun to sear the flesh, it was at dawn that the mercenary commando squad under the command of the skull-faced terrorist for hire, Bushman. It's the rebel camp just south of the Egyptian border. At Bushman's side rode his second in command, Mark Spector. Thus, Mark Spector begins this day as a soldier for hire. He is fated to end it as something else. The slaughter is swift, and soon, an easy victory, Spectre. And yet you do not exult in it? You are too good a man to go soft, Spectre. You must be bloodthirsty. Ruthless to survive in our profession. Maybe I'm remembering I'm a professional soldier. Not a butcher. Or maybe it's just the heat. Fear is the key. <laughs> <laughs> I love that voice. <laughs> you must strike total fear into the hearts of your enemies. And your followers as well. That is why I had my face tattooed into a mask of death. I've become an almost mythical figure of terror. That's the role you chose to play. I don't. Too bad. You would do well to emulate me. Then... The Chopper. Frenchie must be bringing us our new orders. Good morning, Frenchie. They're perhaps not so good, Mark. I had stolen a look at Bushman's secret papers. It's clear to me now that we are fighting for the wrong side, no matter what the pay is. Clear to us both, friend. Perhaps we should plan a leave-taking, eh? Quiet, here comes Bushman. Seconds later. So tonight we would take Selima, but there are no rebels in that area. True, but rumor has it that an American archaeologist found a pharaoh's tomb there. If a tomb has been found, there's gold to be had. You look doubtful? No Egyptian tombs have ever been found so far south of Luxor. But anything's possible. But, Bushman, should we go treasure hunting? Should we risk lives on the chance that we may find valuables? Gold's always worth a risk. With enough of it, a ruthless man might achieve conquests of the entire Sudan. If that's the game you want to play. Every villain is Skeletor, if you really think about it. Yes. 
That hacks it, Frenchy. We've got to get out of here tonight. Oui, Mark. And once again, the crescent moon shines wanely across the desert. The raid begins. Hard, fast, and deadly. The town's small militia meets death in the darkened streets. I land a house on the town square. <laughs> That's the pink. <laughs> Father, who can they be and what do they want? It's Bushman. I've heard the town's people speak of him in frightened whispers. Only one thing would bring him and his band of cutthroats here. Word of our discovery must have leaked out. He will find us eventually. Find the artifacts we brought here to study. Like this jeweled dagger. And force us to lead him to the dig site so he can steal all the precious antiquities we've worked for five years to unearth. He'll... He'll destroy them. Melt them down for gold. What... What are you going to do? What I must. Bushman must be stopped. Stay here. No, father. I beg you. Moments later. Search every house. Gather all the civilians and line them up in the square. A slight noise catches Spectre's ear. He whirls. An instinct takes over. Bushman, look out! Oh, you found a would-be assassin! I'll take him to the square. No. You have much to learn about terror, Spectre. This one will serve as a lesson to the others. No, no! It's worse than the first time he saw Bushman use those steel teeth. Horrified, Spectre kneels by the dying old man. My daughter, they're in White House. She, oh. He's gone. He's dead, Jim. <laughs> Grab that old fool, Spectre, and look at this. His weapon, a jewel-encrusted golden dagger, then... There is a tomb! Vector? Vector? <laughs> Moments later. Oh, who are you? What do you want here? Shut up and listen. Your father's dead, and worse is going to happen to you unless you leave now. I saw a jeep outside. Get in it and go. You, you mercenary scum. You killed him. You filthy... Look, lady, I didn't. Spectre's protest dies in his throat. If he hadn't stopped the old man's thrust, perhaps he would yet live. Yeah, I killed him. And I'll kill you unless you get out fast, woman. Now beat it. Go! Is this how you ease your conscience, pig? I pray you die the death that you deserve. You are getting soft, Spectre. Bushman. No matter. The girl's trail will be easy to follow. And you did save my life. I will overlook your little indiscretion. This time. Have one of the men gather up the gold artifacts in the study. Melted down, they'll bring a handsome prize. Soon I'll have all the treasure. As the mop-up operations progress... Frenchy, I thought you'd never get here. We've got to leave now, before she gets too far. She, what are you talking about? We've got to pick up a girl in the desert. I'll explain later. Let's go. All right, Mark. But I think you're crazy. The copter is this way. Wait, what's Bushman doing over there? Those are civilians. They can't be planning to... Ready? Aim? They are! Gotta stop them! Mark, no! You can do nothing! Fire! No! You... Gunned them down in cold blood! You filthy murderer! I should have let the old man kill you! Eh? <laughs> Spectre lunges, but blind rage makes him careless. Ugh. You're good, Spectre. But Bushman is better! Who talks about themselves in the third person? Bushman. <laughs> Villains do. Weak fool. Take him out in the desert and dump him. Let the sun, the heat he despises so, slay him. From the shadows, Frenchy watches helplessly. And hours later... Oh... Where am I? Nowhere. They left me to die. The sun's rising. No shelter. No hope. Morning. Already the sun's rays beat down mercilessly upon Spectre as he begins what he knows will be a long walk to his grave. Already his throat is dry. His eyes burn. Noon. He is trapped in a bright, bursting nightmare. He staggers on. My skin would just fall off. Perks of being a redhead. Yeah. Night. 
Blindly, mindlessly, like a mechanical man, he crawls onward. Though the wind whips the sand into a stinging storm, he does not remember standing, swaying, nor the shout. Look, against the moon! Nor pitching forward. Quickly, get him out of the storm! Take him to the tomb! I will go to Missy's tent and tell her! Moments later, in the tomb of Erosip. Who is he here, lad? I do not know, Missy! A stranger, white! Allah, he is dead, Missy. Him? Good, he's one of those who killed my father. He deserves to be dead. Leave him where he belongs, rotting here in this tomb. Go back to the packing. We leave as soon as the storm dies. You coming, Missy? Oh, I'll, I'll be along in a minute, Yalad. As the bearers depart. What's wrong with me? How can I be glad that a man is dead? Have I become as bloodthirsty as his kind? He did save me. That might have been what cost him his life. He must have suffered horribly in the desert. He was handsome. Because that's important. <laughs> All right. It's an important plot point, I guess. It's like, we're the only ones here. <laughs> Outside, the howling sandstorm scratches across the face of the crescent moon. Inside, the torch's flickering light dances upon the horde of long dead king and the stony countenance of the dark god who stands guard over him. Perhaps it is a natural phenomenon which causes Mark Spector's heart to resume throbbing. Perhaps it's something else. Whatever the reason. Where am I? Who am I? You, you were dead! No. No more than he is dead. You mean Konshu? Yes. One of the gods of the moon. Known as the Taker of Vengeance. A figure of terror. But how do you know all that? I... I'm not sure. What are you doing? This robe is mine now. <laughs> Mister, you're delirious. You must be. You don't know what you're doing. Don't I? Don't the dead know what they're about? Because I did die, remember? I'm a ghost now. A specter of the moon. The moon's night of vengeance. And I've got work to do. Ha ha! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where are you going? Missy, what? Never mind, Yalad. Just prepare the other dreep. I'm going after him. But the storm! Is abating. I'll be alright. Now hurry. Midnight. And an eerie figure stalks the rooftops of Selena. Bushman. I want him. What? You'll stand aside. Meanwhile, <laughs> inside the village inn, Bushman's men amuse themselves. The women whose husbands' bodies lay in the square are forced into humiliation worse than death. Dance! Dance! <laughs> Wait, what's that noise outside? By the time they hit the street, he is already in the alley, waiting for them to reach the ammo dump. But who did it? There's no one here! Those who can still move scatter. He slides from the shadows to stop one. You're all alone now, Bush, but just you and me. Who? Oh, Spectre! And that's you, isn't it? Yeah, it's me, Bushman. But I've changed, just like you, into a figure of fear. I finally learned your lesson, Bushman. You're gonna be sorry you ever taught me. Suddenly. The girl! No, let me go! With the speed of thought, the cloaked figure races towards the source of the scream. Momentarily forgotten, Bushman fades into the night. Release her now! Lee, at once. Anything you say, Mark? Frenchy, I caught this one sneaking up on you, I thought. I can't believe it. You... you won all by yourself. Yes, but Bushman got away. I wanted his blood for killing your father. He... Killed? I don't care if he got away, as long as you're safe. Bushman's force is destroyed. He's finished as a power in this region, Mark. I'd say you did well enough. And now I suggest we take our copter and depart ourselves. Coming? In a moment, there is something I must know. Your name. Mar Marlene. It's Marlene. Say it. 
Whoa. <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> Say my name. He starts to, but the danger and the death finally catch up with him and bring him shuddering into her arms. His last thought is wry. Not bad for a dead man. He regains his health and acquires three new identities. He is still Mark Spector, and he becomes Stephen Grant, whose Wall Street wizardry parlays Spector's modest savings into a millionaire's fortune. Then he adds Jake Lockley to the list of selves. Jake, a street smart cabbie who hears everything. Together with Marlene and Frenchie, they come to live in a Long Island mansion. Together they are. Moon Knight! Continuing the mission begun in the Pharaoh's tomb. And now it's come down to this. Another... Steven, is someone with you? Oh, I heard you talking. And... No one's with me, Marlene. Just dictating a case history. Moon Knight hit some heroin pushers tonight. I took this from one of them. Bushman. Yes, your father's killer here in New York now. Out from my blood. I'm going after him as Lockley. Frenchy, up on the roof. How are the modifications coming on the new chopper? Magnifique, Mark. She is quiet as the wind now. So quiet that the defense department will be after us for the secret. Good. Rank her up to follow Lockley's cab. Had a weird feeling about this, Marlene. Like I should tape Bushman's story before I left. But you stay behind, no matter what your feelings are. Oh, Father, I thank you. <laughs> Bushman must be stopped. Stay here. No matter what my feelings are, Stephen. You heard me, lady. Yes, and I've heard it before. Shall I expect you? That is, shall I expect Mr. Grant back for dinner, sir? Don't hold your breath, Samuels. Grant just checked out for the night, and me, I got a heavy day to hit. Can you hear me through the radio, Frenchie? I'm going to Jane's diner. We oui, Mark. I will be following in the new chopper's maiden flight. It's going to be hard, Stephen. Or Mark. Jake. Moon Knight. Whoever you really are. The last time I stayed behind when a man I loved went after Bushmen. I... I lost my father. And now, I don't think I could bear to lose you. All four of you. Soon. Hey, Gina, how's the kids? Finally passing Black History, and otherwise quiet. Ah, good to hear it. But it's really crawly I came to hit on. What do you know about this? Ah, yes. The ubiquitous Death's Head. Jake, born by the miscreants in the employ of the new Mr. Big in town, goes by the appellation of Bushman, and he's already subsumed most of the drug and gambling action. Operates out in the open, even though he conceals his visage behind a mask. Almost as if he wants to be found. He does, Crowley. Where? Word is, he's got a domicile in back of a early club near Harlem at... 99th in Amsterdam, Frenchy, and make it fast. As soon as I stash Lockley's gear in the trunk, Moon Knight's got a date with their sleazy follies. There is a slight buzz in your cow microphone, Mark. Perhaps I did not understand you. The Burlesque Club. What do you... Unfinished business, Frenchy, from a long time ago. Take her up. I'd tell you about it, but you'd only want to get in on that action. And I can't allow that. This one's mine, and mine alone. Hello. A perfectly tuned Mercedes purrs to life. The glossy car slides from the shadows and follows. Seven minutes later, Amsterdam Avenue at 99th Street. Got the idea for my glider cape from Moon Knight's first drop into action. It's not as good as a real parachute, of course, or even a hang glider, but good enough to get me down in one piece. That's all I'm gonna need to chop Bushman into the longest, hardest fall he's ever taken. This place is crammed with rough drunks and careless dancers. Were the faces of the women not so blank, so stripped of feeling, the scene would be a reminiscent of a nightclub in the Sudan, where slaughterers forced fresh widows to dance through their grief. Into the stale smoke slides a figure clad in jet and silver, radiating silent menace. Where's the door to the back? Huh? Uh, up those stairs. Tell your boss I'm about to enter his trap. I know who that is. I even saw him once in the papers. They call him the Moon Knight. Upstairs, the smoke is more expensive. The music softer and laced with the click of chips. The whizzing spin of hypnotic wheels. Say what? Who? Coming up here right now? 
It is him! Alright, hold it! Freeze, man! Freeze right there! Thugs fumble for guns and gamblers gasp. <gasps> Whoa. But Moon Knight hardly freezes. Excuse me for barging in, gentlemen, but I assume this is the place. Yes, I see you're all wearing the death's head pendant like good little boys. Better watch it though, those things could be omens. Kinda like wearing tombstones around your necks. Truncheon and crescent dart fly, followed by rigid hands hard as oak, and the last two thugs like dead trees are felled. Who has that dude? Ain't you never heard of Moon Knight? Yeah, I did, but I didn't know he was real. The die has been cast, the chips have fallen. All right, Bushman, you wanted me and I'm here. This is it, scum. Time to compare lessons. Six seconds, then a secret door swings open on silent hinges. Nothing emerges. A trap. Just what I came for. Peter's on the fly, diving and rolling. Ducking and dodging. <laughs> Action dodge. And rising ready, but... Nothing. No one here. Just a fancy office, empty. But on the desk... The dagger. The golden dagger. Now memento, Mr. Spectre. It spins to a second secret door located in the rear of the office. It spins to a voice never to be forgotten once heard. A voice from long ago. Now memento of a fabulous treasure stolen from the grasp of antiquity. The only memento I was able to keep thanks to you, Spectre. Thanks to your treachery. Into the back. Where it will be neater. Go on. Move. Outside, the Mercedes screeches dead in the gutter. Lost the chopper in traffic, but I saw him swoop down on this block. Which means it's gotta be this jiggle joint. <laughs> jiggle joint. Uh, this, this gotta be in the title. <laughs> this jiggle joint. This jiggle joint. <laughs> you heard me. Move! Forget it, Bushman. I've come for you. And nothing on this earth can stop me. You're afraid, aren't you, Bushman? Afraid of the figure of terror before you. The lesson took. Stay back! Suddenly. Oh! At the sight of her father's murderer, Marlene cannot restrain a gasp. Instinctively, the cloaked figure turns toward the source of the sound. Momentarily forgotten, Bushman takes the opportunity to fire, but. No! No one could dodge like that! If I can't kill you, then I'll kill the girl. Marlene! You stinking son of a pig! Moon Knight lunges, but blind rage makes him careless. Ah, you're good, but compared to Bushman, you're a weak fool, Spectre. Now die. The steel teeth seek Moon Knight's jugular, but find only his truncheon. Arrgh. You had your chance, Bushman, but soon the brutal flailing fury overwhelms him until nothing can withstand the savage onslaught. Steven, stop! Beaten, Steven, stop! No, Steven! Stop! Steven, not like this! He sees her through a crimson haze, feels the blood in his wrist pounding against her fingers, and does not understand, cannot comprehend the plea for mercy. Marlene, you, you're all right, but he, he killed your father. Yes, and it was my father, not yours. His fist strains forward, still wanting to strike the next blow and a thousand more. At that time, I thought you were a man just as bad as him, Stephen. But even if he hadn't killed that man, and given birth to the man you've become, I was wrong about you, and we both know that. You're not like him. You never were. Finally, as a soft moan heard through glass rises to a keening shriek, the crimson haze fades, and the fist falters, opens tremblingly. Sirens, Marlene. Yes, Stephen. Sirens. Getting louder. Closer. It's the police. They'll take care of Bushmen. We've got to leave fast. Please, Stephen. Yes. Frenchie, can you hear me? Come on down for us. We'll be on the roof. Yes, I went a little crazy, Marlene. Remembering that at one point I was almost like him. But why did you stop me? Your father. I stopped you because I went crazy too at first. I wanted to kill him, but I knew that I couldn't. We couldn't. In a way, he created Moon Knight. But you've been through a lot since then. We've both worked hard to shape the Moon Knight into something better than he was at his creation. And I just want you to stay that way. I didn't want Bushman to spoil what he had started. What you've made into a legend. 
Behind that legend is a man, a good and powerful man. And no matter how many roles you play, false or true, you must never abuse that power. You must never forget who that man truly is. Next, the Skid Row Slasher. So there you go. What do you think? Not bad for our first read, right? You liked it a lot. You can, like share it with people, you know? We might do more with the rest of our comics. That'd be pretty fun. Let us know if you want us to do that. We got more Moon Knight stuff. Or don't, and we'll probably do it anyway. <laughs> or you can make a request and we'll search it out and read it for you. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Some Gambit stuff. Some Gambit stuff, some Rogue stuff, some... Spawn versus Batman. Spawn versus Batman. <laughs> That'll be exciting. I get a lot of Spawn stuff. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the only Batman comic we own, is the crossover between Spawn. <laughs> Nothing against Batman. Moon Knight is my Batman. Drop a subscription for more. Hit the bell so they'll tell you when. And whatever else you want to do. Whatever else you want to do. Leave or us a don't. comment. Doesn't matter. Doesn't have to be relevant. You could just put like <laughs> cheesecake or something. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, bye. Bye.